Did you know the Sublime self-titled album almost had a different title and cover? Or that one of the songs includes a take where singer Bradley Knoll sang the wrong lyrics? What about the famous actor who was bitten by Lou Dog during a filming of a music video? Stick around and we'll answer these questions and more on 10 Fun Facts About Sublime's Self-Titled Album. Number 1. Tragedy Sublime's self-titled album met with monumental success, reaching the top 20 of the Billboard 200 and spending over three years on the Billboard charts. However, singer and songwriter Bradley Knoll would not be around to enjoy any of the album's success because he unfortunately passed away of a drug overdose on May 25, 1996 in a San Francisco hotel room while the band was on tour, just two months prior to the release of the album. He was only 28 years old. Number 2. Killin' It Sublime's self-titled album was originally planned to be called Killin' It, but this title was changed following singer Bradley Knowles' passing as it was determined that it would be in bad taste. It's also hard to imagine the album cover with anything other than Bradley's iconic back tattoo. You got a tattoo! <laughs> So do you, dude? No. Oh. oh, dude, what does mine say? Sublime. What about mine, dude? Number three. Friends don't let friends get stomach tattoos. Speaking of the popular Sublime tattoo, Bradley originally wanted to have it done on his stomach. However, his tattoo artist Opie Ortiz suggested that he get it on his back because nobody would see a stomach tattoo if it was always going to be hidden behind a guitar. And I'm just going to go ahead and say what everyone else is probably thinking at this point, but a big thank you to Opie for saving us from the possibility of an album cover featuring a stomach tattoo. I'll do anything I can the wrong way. Number 4. No Bozos The popular album cover for Sublime's self-titled album featuring singer Bradley Knoll's tattoo is actually a photograph taken by tattoo artist Opie Ortiz after he finished working on the piece for Bradley. It's not uncommon at all for a tattoo artist to take a photograph of his finished work. However, very few of such photos end up becoming iconic album covers. The original album cover was supposed to feature the slobbish clown watching TV in his underwear. However, this piece was moved to the inside of the CD booklet when the band decided to go with Opie's photo in honor of Bradley after his passing. As Opie himself explains, the original album art for self-titled, it was an idea that we were going to do this clown sitting in a chair, and it's like a fat clown. He's relaxing in his lounge chair with his drugs or whatever, looking out the window, and that was going to be the album art. And then what happened with Brad's passing is we had changed it with a picture that I'd taken of the tattoo with the floral border pattern, and then we moved the clown to the inside of the CD jacket. Number 5. Debo's Dog Bite The music video for Santeria features notable actor Tom Lister Jr. performing as the Sancho character. Fans of the 1995 Ice Cube comedy Friday might recognize him as the bike-stealing antagonist Debo. While his character spent most of the sequel next Friday inside of a dog kennel, the actor was also bitten on the lip by Lou Dog while filming the music video for Santeria where he apparently got a little too close for the Dalmatian's comfort. Number 6. 6-9. Six, 69. <laughs> Attentive listeners may have noticed that although the sublime song about the infamous Los Angeles riots is titled April 29, 1992, which is the day the actual riots occurred, the lyrics clearly mention April 26. Singer Bradley Knoll allegedly sang the wrong date by mistake, but otherwise the take still sounded good enough that it was used on the final cut of the album. April 26, 1992, Number 7. Cancel Me Down The popular Sublime song, Caress Me Down, was never released as a single, but received significant airplay on rock alternative stations throughout the 90s. However, as of 2020, the song has allegedly been removed from many playlists due to a controversy surrounding Ron Jeremy, who is mentioned in the song's lyrics. 
mucho gusto Me llamo Bradley I'm horny Open Ron Jeremy And if you wanna get popped in your knee Bobby Luigi Number 8, Burp Doing Time in the Summertime The final song of Sublime's self-titled album, Doin' Time, uses a sample of George Gershwin's Summertime, as performed by famed jazz flutist Herbie Mann. In order to use the sample, Sublime had to agree to change the opening lyrics from Doin' Time to Summertime. However, it was impossible for Bradley Knoll to re-record the lyrics at this point, considering he had recently passed away. The opening lyric was re-recorded by friend and producer Michael Happel. Not to be confused with Michael Rappaport, because nobody wants to hear what he has to say. Here's cold crap with his cancel cold crap. Shut up! Shit! Shut the fuck up! Nobody wants oh, to hear it. Fucker. You've been talking all fucking week. An unaltered version of the song would later be released in 2006 on the album's deluxe edition. Summertime. Number 9. Rock Star Obsession Although some speculate that Bradley Knoll's drug addictions may have been initiated by his early prescriptions of Ritalin as a youth, the Sublime Singer's wife attributed his heroin use to an unhealthy obsession with rock stars. As she told Rolling Stone magazine, he wanted to be a rock star. He said it was very rock and roll, you know, Harry Farrell and Kurt Cobain and all those guys did drugs, and Brad wanted to see what it was like. Then they honestly began to think that they write better music. I mean, Robin the Hood was written when Brad was at his worst of being strung out. It's a great album, but it's all about heroin abuse. Now I've got the needle. I can shake, but I can't breathe. Take it away, and I want more, more. One day I'm gonna lose the war. But you've got to go on. Slag off. You've changed, man. It used to be about the music. Did you know that I do all of the editing for these videos by myself? Yep, that's right. Me, one person, including research, script writing, voiceovers, thumbnails, video editing, promotion. It's a lot of work and requires a full-time job for one person to handle, which I don't mind doing because I love being able to express my humor while also talking about the music that I enjoy. However, it would also be great to have some help improving my content, and that's where I need your help. The easiest way to support this channel is to click the like button. This will help the video get shown to more people. A better way to support this channel is to subscribe and hit the notification bell. This will help you get notified when we release new videos each week. And if you really want to make a big difference, check the description of this video for more ways that you can help this channel grow and support the creation of new content. If you like what we're doing, show us some love and let us know that you're out there and let us know in the comments what your favorite album is. Perhaps we'll talk about it in a future video. Thank you all so much for your continued love and support. Number 10. No More War The story of Sublime's self-titled album and its meteoric rise to the top of the Billboard charts is ultimately a tragedy. However, some of Bradley Knoll's surviving friends and family members try to look at the situation as a dark cloud with a silver lining. As Bradley's wife explained, you know, the one thing that gave me the most peace after Brad died was when his first love Eileen came to me and said, he did everything he wanted to do and he went to sleep. He was tired and he went to sleep. The way she put it was exactly true. Brad was so tired, he really was. He was tired of letting everyone down, of letting himself down. He was tired of trying to stay clean, tired of everything. Brad had accomplished everything he wanted. He always wanted to have a baby. He wanted to get his family back. He wanted to get this album written and he wanted it to be the best one he ever wrote. And he did. He wanted his band to have glory. And they did. I'm not saying that it's okay that Brad died, because it's not okay. So many things have happened that I wish he could see. Sublime being nominated for awards, and their videos being on MTV all the time, and their songs played on the radio. Or things will happen with me, and Brad's the first person I want to tell, because we were best friends. I want to see his reaction to all this. What's okay is there's no more struggle, no more war. That struggle took up a lot of our energy and our time. It was horrible. He's at peace now. Hey, thanks for watching. 
If you liked that video, you might like our next one. 10 Fun Facts About Californication by Red Hot Chili Peppers.